needs. Meantime, Novartis, the Swiss uh, pharma company, said this week that it's testing a potential swine flu vaccine on people. But while the much of the world rats its brains over the next super flu brew or what it could be or HXN whatever, a hospital in Beijing, China, is reporting that it cured three quarters. That's right, 75 percent of swine flu cases receiving are using traditional Chinese medicine. Now, this is a claim that has not been independently verified, but does highlight that traditional Chinese uh, medicine, uh, a very uh, kind of a, an enigmatic conundrum to a lot of people, the, the way the diagnosis is made, the way the prescriptions are filled, well, maybe it's still a, an untapped resource in modern life. Joining us in this segment of the program is Richard Yu, CEO of Singapore Listed Yu Yan Sung. And if you think you recognize the name of the company, you probably do. They have shops dotted all over bringing you naturopathic uh, solutions to your ailments. Richard, good afternoon. Welcome to the program. Um, have you seen, just out of curiosity, have you seen heightened business? Have you seen an increase in traffic and questions from uh, people because of this uh, swine flu thing that just won't go away? Yes, I think uh, people are interested to see what they can take uh, to, you know, to build up immunity against uh, swine flu and other forms of flu. And uh, times like this, I think we get a bit more interest. And what kind of things are selling well? Uh, I, you know, sometimes people just kind of uh, act a little bit irrationally. Like when you have outbreaks, all of a sudden, uh, make makers of companies that make vitamin C will spike up. But I'm assuming that being a TCM yeah. major operator, that we're talking about cordyceps, we're talking about lingzhi, yanzhi, maybe astragalus, things of uh, that nature. Is there any particular thing that's selling really uh, well or anything that you've discovered uh, is that actually works to boost the white blood count? I think your knowledge of TCM is uh, very good nowadays, huh, Bernie? Um, <laughs> but, that. <laughs> uh, no, generally speaking, uh, herbs like Linzi would, would be good to just build up immunity. And there are some specific herbs uh, for, the, for flus like the uh, Balangan. Mm -hmm. And there's a formula called Ying Chao, which we use for, uh, for flus. So uh, people are, you know, perhaps buying a little bit more of that. But I, I wouldn't say that, you know, um, we, we see a huge increase in business just because of the swine flu. I think generally speaking, people are more concerned about uh, being, staying healthy and just building up immunity. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard, you're being, you're being very, very typically uh, humble and understated, but the numbers belie what you're talking about. I mean, we've had a global credit crunch, we've had recession, we've had an economic downturn, the likes of which have not been seen this generation. The last time you reported results, and it was, uh, what is this, August, of May, about three months ago, in May, we, a 5% uh, increase months, in yes. revenues, a 40% jump yes. in profit. Somebody's buying a lot of stuff and you're selling more <laughs> profitable stuff. Tell me about what's going on. Um, I think we've seen, um, a, as I said, a greater interest um, from from you know the general public and um, we're getting more traffic coming into the stores but because of the of, of the economic crisis um, we actually lost customers who were the high spenders but we gained customers at the uh, mid to lower end um, you know of the market so I think uh, overall it worked out better for us Okay, Richard, hang on. We're going to just take a quick break a -roo here for some ads and important messages for you folks out there on TV. Land more with Richard Yu, CEO of Yu Yun Sung, when we uh, return. And also, we're talking about the uh, really renewed vigor and the renewed popularity of TCM. And if you don't know what that acronym mean, means by now, what rock have you been sleeping under? Traditional Chinese medicine. <laughs> and one of the biggest players in this uh, neck of the woods in this space happens to be Singapore-listed Yu Yun Sung. And CEO Richard Yu rejoins us on the show. Uh, from Singapore. Um, you know, I, 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 I'm surprised, Richard, at the number of, you know, when I go through, uh, through Hong Kong and I go through the neighborhoods, I go to the, the, the TCM, uh, the herbal shops, the Chinese medicine shops, the tr traditional bone setters, I am surprised by the number of expatriates that are getting their bones set, or I don't know how to say it in English, but uh, they have a zhong yi, a fu gan, di sereng hao, you know, the, the basically taking padding of, you know, pads of uh, medicated herbs and basically uh, just sort of uh, salving uh, wounded areas or sprains and concussions and that sort of thing. Um, have you seen a pickup? Is it becoming more of a global trend? Is it becoming universally accepted across cultural uh, borders more and more so than ever? I believe so. I think uh, nowadays in Europe uh, you see a lot of uh, uh, acupuncture clinics and so on. And so I think people are getting to accept 
especially acupuncture, um, more, more easily. I think with, with the Chinese herbs, it's still difficult because basically because of the preparation time and the taste and so on. I think that's, that's still a bit uh, difficult for Westerners to take. But um, mm -hmm. of all the different uh, practices of traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture is probably the ones that's most universally accepted. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we do see a lot, a lot of foreigners now in our clinics too. Yeah. Foreigners? Yeah, yeah. In the clinic. Yeah, uh, yeah. Also, uh, you, you, you say that things yes, are hard to, uh, you know, the taste is a little bit maybe unique and an acquired taste, but um, maybe if you go into the, uh, the oldest shops, you know, with the 120 uh, year old practitioners there, but if you go into a Union Sung, if you go into the modern shops, everything is capsulated, everything is enteric coated. I mean, there's really no issue with pal palatability there, which is one of the, uh, the reasons that Yuyan Sung uh, has been very successful, right? You take away some of the gr grittiness or griminess. Uh, right. Forgive me if that's the wrong choice of words, but you, you gather my meaning here. Yeah, I mean, um, you can prepare the medicines in different forms. And so one of the forms that um, we've been able to produce them in is in capsule form. But um, if you see a physician, the best way uh, of taking medicine is still to decoct it uh, into, into a, in a soup, basically. Or uh, nowadays we have powders, you know, which are basically powdered extracts. It's like instant coffee. And you can mix, you can mix the powders up and, um, and also uh, reconstitute as, as, a, as, a, as a drink. Um, but it's still, there's still a taste issue when that happens. So um, the, the capsule form, of course, is, is more for the, uh, what we call the classic formulations, the standardized formulations. But when you see a doctor, they would tend to um, tailor make a formulation just for your body constitution at that point in time. So it has Are to we, be... Uh, you know, uh, yeah, over the over the past few years, like I, 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 you can you can tell me more about Singapore and Hong Kong. You actually have a licensing scheme now. There is a an oversight yes. body for traditional Chinese medicine practitioners. You can't just hang out a shingle and call yourself a you know a ti da yi gun or a, a traditional Chinese yeah. bone Zhong setter yi, yeah. uh, nowadays. So there, yeah, yeah Zhong yi, there is a yeah. licensing scheme. Yeah. A, a lot of insurance companies are making co-payments now and recognize that they do have, you know that uh, traditional therapies do have a role in the treatment of ailments alongside uh, Western, uh, Western medicine. But from time to time, you get scare stories about how arsenic ended up in this or that uh, Chinese medicine uh, capsule or whatever. There's been a scare with some of the uh, stuff that's uh, sold at some of the Chinese department stores. Have we overcome that, or are these always going to pop up? Will there be always be quality control issues? Well, I believe that um, a lot depends on the integrity of the manufacturer, obviously. Um, you know, I think safety is the primary issue here. Uh, you're looking at uh, making sure that the herbs are authenticated, that they're the correct herbs, uh, the correct grade of herbs, uh, and that they're free from contamination by heavy metals or uh, bacteria. So these are the sort of processes that we have to go through in our GMP manufacturing uh, to ensure that, firstly, the product is safe. Then after that, uh, you look at the efficacy issue. You know, does it work for you? Uh, I think um, in, you know, if, you, if you choose the right uh, you know, product and so on from the right manufacturer, I don't think you would have issues. But there are mm -hmm. some manufacturers who are, not, you know, who are not honest, basically, and they can contaminate. Mm -hmm. What is the, uh, finally, Richard, uh, is Western and uh, TCM medicine, are they fully integrated, or you know, is TCM still considered on the periphery, uh, in, in maybe in the same class as podiatrists or no. chiropractors? I mean, the, there yes. are biases yeah. by, you know, the Western medical community that are not easy to overcome yeah. because they are very, yeah. you know, they kind of dig in their heels sometimes. But are, are we seeing more cross-cultural right. uh, acceptance here, and is it getting better as, you know, each year goes by? Yeah, I believe so. I think uh, TCM is classified as what they call a complementary and alternative medicine, um, uh, as opposed to sort of uh, normal tr traditional Western medicine. But um, I think the, you know, uh, the issue is re whether the, the two of them can actually work together. And I believe that uh, we have to, we in the TCM industry have to raise our standards and become uh, equivalent in terms of evidence base uh, to be able to match uh, Western medicine. And I think this is what we're working towards. I think. Uh, Mm -hmm. Western doctors will always say, look, where's the evidence? Where's the science behind it? And this is very important for us that we can actually work towards uh, being able to show that uh, mm -hmm. there is some science base oh. behind our products.
So this is right. uh, one of our priorities. Richard, great talking to you. You take care. We'll see you next time, okay? Richard, you, you and Sung.